Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Well, we all recognise this guy, don't we? Yes, it's the porn guy, Deming Green. But anyway. He was trying to get a coherent answer about the TV licence from our mad dad. He was basically asking if she wants to do away with the TV licence, and what will she replace it with? You will clearly see that... I get the feeling that these two don't know what to replace the TV licence with, and uh, my dad's reasons for wanting to get rid of it. Now, that sounds a bit bonkers to me, and I haven't got a clue what she's driving at, and clearly nobody else does. It's one of the weirdest conversations I have ever had, and it's one of the weirdest reasons I've ever heard for wanting to get rid of the TV licence. Thank you. Uh, uh, morning. Um, the... I want to ask about, about the BBC consultation, but, but a, a last thought. Uh, you've just described whether or not the remit uh, is going to be imposed for 10 years or more as a detail. That seems to me a hell of a lot more than a detail, because if I want to buy Channel 4, I want to know, am I committed to this quite onerous remit for 10 years, or am I committed to it forever? because that's going to make a huge difference to the sale price. It needs to be obviously something that needs to be kind of absolutely explicit at the point where we ask for bids. So as the Secretary of State has said, we're working through the detail of that now, uh, and we will be saying more about that um, as uh, we move into publishing the media bill and taking it through Parliament. And and therefore we would not be asking MPs to vote on a media bill on a sale without having that degree of detail, yeah, which is why we're working through it now. Or, or, or indeed to, to sell it to anyone, because, as I say, it will, it will make a colossal yeah. difference. Well, I mean, obviously, price. we couldn't sell it until the legislation was passed well, anyway. Because no-one would want to buy it. Indeed. Well, they can buy it legally at the moment, because yeah. um, there's clearly many discussions to be had. But, sorry, I, wa- I wanted to uh, move on to um, the BBC. Um, and, and it, partly as a result of, of what happened over the Channel 4 consultation, I'm, I'm fascinated by, by what you said this morning, uh, where you said you have decided that the licence fee can't carry on, but now you're going to consult on whether the licence fee should carry on or not. I mean, doesn't that make that consultation no, a complete sham? Um, no. Um, what I've said is that we are looking at a review no, you, of a you said the licence fee is unfair. It yeah, cannot carry on. Well, it on. is. Yeah, and I and I and, and and that is my position that in this modern age of a rapidly changing If you think it's unfair, why review it? Just get rid of it then. Uh, that don't make no sense to me. I think she's talking out of her arse. Broadcasting landscape, which actually is changing at warp speed. Um that we that the BBC licence fee, which was introduced in was it nineteen forty five? 22? Uh, when was it? My goodness, you're testing my general So, yeah, knowledge. well, <laughs> even you and I aren't that old, Damien. <laughs> so, when the licence fee was first um, introduced is a very long time ago. And when we only had one, two and three channels or four channels, I'm very sure that it was the right model at the right time. But to sit here and say, all those years later, in the broadcasting landscape that we are now, that a model for funding the BBC all of those years ago is still applicable and still appropriate at a time when 74% of all convictions for non-payment of that licence fee are women, I think is almost antediluvian. We're at a point where... Forgive me, she says this a few times and I'm... Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't know what, what, what she's going on about there. It's probably more my fault than my nads, but hey you are. We, are, we have to you know, wake up and smell a coffee and realise that it, the times are changing rapidly in terms of the broadcasting landscape. It's time for a, a, a more effective, a more modern and, uh, and fair way of funding the BBC. What that is... I don't have an opinion on, but I, I would imagine the debate and the review, which you know I'm sure everybody will find, particularly in Parliament, means to contribute to. I'm sure that that review will be robust, and there will be, for the first time in a very long time, a full exploration of the licence fee, how it works, and, and, and what the options are for moving forward in the future. And there are many other public service broadcasters in other countries, which work in other ways, we need to explore that as well. That's a perfectly arguable case 
that, that the licence fee has had its day. But I'm making a different point, which is that if you're consulting about future funding, yes. you have said, you representing Her Majesty's Government, have already come to a very firm conclusion that that, that consultation is not going to mean anything because one of the potential recommendations of that is already ruled out of court by the government. So it's, it's, a, it's almost a process point about democracy and consultation. As I say, I'm, I'm not arguing about the substance. Well, I, I understand your point completely. And if the review came back to me and said that the only fair way we think of funding the BBC moving forward is the licence fee, it would have to have a very robust case for doing that, given how unfair the licence fee is. Um, and, it's, you know, and it is a regressive tax. It is a regressive tax, and it does penalise women I, I, and the poor more than it does others. It would have to have a very strong case as to why they thought the BBC licence fee. But I'm not, you know, if they come to me at the review and say there is only one way we can do this, and that's the licence fee, but there would be a, certainly in this day and age, in 2022, to explain why that was a fair way to move forward funding the licence fee, would, uh, funding the BBC. But I'd find it difficult to think that that's the only conclusion that a review could come up with. Okay. Now, for me, when it comes, to, I don't I really have a strong opinion either way about the license fee. But if you want to get rid of it, you must have a plan in mind. It seems to me that you you just want to get rid of it, come what may. And if somebody says, "Oh, well, what's your plan for the babies? Oh, I don't know. We'll just wing it as we go along. She's bonkers. And, this, and I still can't work out this about this, uh, how many figures of women being um, a criminal conviction for not having a TV licence. Uh, as I say, I'm clearly missing something. And I'm sure somebody will, much more brighter than me will explain it to me and I'll go, oh yeah, I see your point. Okay, but you want an independent chair. It's not going to be that. He, she is not going to be that independent. <laughs> from the sound of it. But and, and, and partly, I mean, I, I ask these questions quite specifically. You'll have full reign, or she will have full reign to come to me and say whatever the review finds. That's the point of a review. That everybody, including the BBC, will be part of that review and can contribute to it. And at the end of their review, they will, as every review does, they will report to me the findings. I have no influence, no say over what happens during the review. That's completely separate, totally independent. That may be so, Nadine, but you've already made up your mind, so what's the point? That's My view is as irrelevant as your view and, you know, <laughs> anybody else who wants to express a public view in this place is. The review will take evidence from everybody and will weigh that up. I mean, that, that, that's not quite true given what happened with Channel 4, where even if you strip away 38 degrees, and we can all have views about organised uh, letter-writing campaigns, the overwhelming majority came to one conclusion and you came to another conclusion which, you know, it's your right as Secretary of State, but your voice matters, other people's voice doesn't matter. And so, you know, applying that forward to a potential BBC review, it seems to me there is absolutely no point in that review coming to a conclusion uh, that you disagree with. Um, and, and, and I ask very specifically on, on the basis of this committee, because we did a report specifically on this uh, a few months ago, and having gone into it actually thinking, you can't carry on with the licence fee again, we, we sort of reluctantly, I'm, I'm sort of generalising about a, a long report, but we sort of heaved a sigh and came to the conclusion that as it stands, the licence fee is, is the least bad option at the moment. And it is possible, so it's not an, it, that view is not out of court either. And, and I, I just observed that for the Secretary of State to rule out, actually, a, a, a select committee recommendation as, as not even being worth thinking about now is an odd way to start a consultation process and on top of that I, I think I mean you, you, you make the point about about convictions um, how, how many women are in jail for not paying the BBC license fee None. today I have uh, no idea I don't no. have that figure. Wow <laughs> you'd have thought she'd have if that's her reason for getting rid of the license you'd have thought she'd have had that statistic at hand Wow uh, <laughs> Now, as again, again, there may be some perfectly ex ex explanation for getting rid of the TV licence. But you've got to have a plan in place to replace it with. It just seems to me, get rid of the licence, replace it with, oh, you deal with that. 
She's an idiot. Figure. None, none, none has. But ever. they still have a criminal no. conviction for not Well, and, and it's largely, I mean, as 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 you know, that. I'm sorry, it's, you it's, cannot justify women. Seventy-four percent of women having criminal convictions for non-payment of the license fee on the basis that they may not be in prison. But, but, but it, it's 74% of a happily small number because far fewer women commit crimes than men. Women are a, you know, a better sex. And you also men, cannot that, justify but, that 30% of all uh, women's, all female convictions are for non-payment of the licence fee. Well, there the, is no justifiable argument But they argument are characteristically for, for actually for, for debt non-payments and it will very often be combined. Understand because women take people, responsibility. Um, yeah, well, because women, uh, if, if they can't pay their licence fee, they're probably not paying their council tax, they may not be paying utility bills as well. So it's, it's a much more complex situation. But the idea... So can I just answer that, that point? Yeah, of course. That's because women tend to be the ones whose names on the rent book or on the mortgage on all yeah. household bills because women take responsibility for families and children. Is that true? I don't know, but... What's that got to do with uh, sucking eggs? Or, or am I missing something, Nadine? ...children... And that is why. It's not because women are bad payers or women tend to get into debt more than no, men do. Absolutely. It's because women no, no. take responsibilities I, I, for family I, I, and children. I completely agree with all of that. I just think... Well, this... I think you are making the case that more women are in debt because no. more women don't pay the council no, tax. I'm, I'm, That's I'm, not the case. It's no. the case that women take responsibility. No, the reason why you're getting a strop on now is because, in a way, he's, he's practically... It seems to me as though he's uh, just dissecting your own argument and making you look incredibly stupid and you don't like it. But then again, I might be missing something. What do you guys think? Absolutely not. I'm, I'm making a completely different case, which is that this is a slightly bogus statistic lugged into the licence fee debate. And the licence fee debate is complex and I get all the arguments against it as a, as a regressive tax and all of that. But I think the... Uh, the fact that successive governments have, for example, decided not to decriminalise the licence fee uh, suggests that this is actually a side issue. It's, it's, it's not, to be candid, your best point against the licence fee. There are other good points against the licence fee, but I return to you know, my basic point is that you've come to a decision and now you're starting a consultation, and that's the wrong way round, that actually for the Secretary of State you should have a consultation and then come to a decision. Um, one other thing um, is that you just said that uh, Channel 4, as a public service broadcaster, couldn't become a subscription model while it was a public service broadcaster. So presumably, just to check, that applies to the BBC as well, because that's one of the alternative models, of course, is subscription. So as long as the BBC retains a, a, remains a public service broadcaster, you say it can't go on to subscription. So the BBC is a public service broadcaster and will be remaining a public service broadcaster. Um, I'm... The Channel 4, the remit of the BBC, is for discussion during the Charter Renewal. And it's obligation to... Um, there's no changes will happen before 2027. So I'm not saying um, anything about subscription models or, or anything else for anybody in the future, except that we are designing that. through the Channel 4 public service sale, the, uh, the, how that's going to look to a purchaser, um, what the remit will be. The licence that Channel 4 exists under at the moment um, couldn't be a subscription model. Um, and I, I don't believe it would be in the future. I mean, Sarah, yeah. do you want to... I mean, I just think that the funding, the funding... If the funding review concluded that the best way to fund the BBC in the future would be a subscription model, then we would seek to amend the, the way that the BBC operated at the Charter review point. That and will this subscription subscription costs more than the TV licence or less over a year? I'm just wondering, because as far as I can tell, when it comes to the TV licence, it's a hell of a lot less than the Sky subscription. That would be the right time to do it, because that's the point at which we review the mission and purposes of the BBC. I'm sorry, you're saying different things at different what? times in this evidence. You've just I'm said saying... that Channel 4 as a public service broadcaster, can't operate on a subscription model for the obvious reasons. And that the I don't know about you, but that last side of Damien Green, she doesn't look right impressed with these two. It has at the moment, yeah. Yeah, and uh, well, as it does at the moment, so it could do then. Channel 4, you could sell it 
as a subscription model and still claim it's a public service broadcast. So I think it would be uh, obviously uh, foolish to rule out different ways of people accessing services on television for the future. So you just... So if Channel 4 and BBC are completely different, Channel 4 is funded by advertising... BBC is funded by a licence fee. Yes. You're trying to compare two completely different public service broadcasters, two completely different licences and operating models. Yes, but, but, but the point I'm making is that for either, if one of the things about public service broadcasting is that it's universally available. One of the things about subscription that, models that is that by is definition they're not universally available. On, 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 and I agree with what you said 15 minutes ago, which was that you can't have a subscription model for a public service broadcaster. What I'm fascinated is that both of you are now rowing back from that. Well, universally available, but if you don't pay your licence fee for the BBC, you can receive a criminal conviction. So if you own, if you own a television and don't pay a licence fee to the BBC, you can receive a criminal conviction. Okay, yeah, but on a subscription model, if I don't pay That's for a qualified it, I don't universal it. model. Oh, I see. So, so, a subscription so if you can't afford to pay the licence fee... Yeah, no, no, I'm not talking about the licence fee, I'm talking about a subscription model, because I genuinely don't know what, what your policy is, whether you can have a subscription service that you call a public service broadcaster. Are you saying that you can have a universally available subscription service? Even so if, if, as you all know, some people have contended that a future funding model for the BBC might be a partial subscription model, for instance, and so there may be ways in which we would seek to <coughs> amend the way that the BBC is accessed as a result of the outcomes of the funding review. I think what's completely clear from what the Secretary of State said is that Options are all on the table, uh, the including fee. the licence fee, in the sense that you've been well, clear that if the reviewer the came back and said, concluded as this committee did. But you've already said it's a regressive tax and uh, it's an unfair tax. So why would you leave it on the table if it's a regressive tax and an unfair tax? And uh, how many women have got a conviction for not paying a TV licence? You're not making any sense now. Did that? That was the answer. Then you know, she would have to look at that very deeply and seriously and take that into account in, in deciding how to go forwards. And then at Charter Review, we would obviously want to look at the scope of the services offered by the BBC and the mission and purposes of it, as is appropriate to review at the time of the Charter. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on. Now, the thing is, when it comes to the TV licence, I don't really have a strong opinion on whether you keep it or you're not. As I said earlier in the video... But to me, Mad Nad's reasons for doing away with it sounds bonkers to me. But as I said in the video, if somebody knows what she's on about, you know, leave a comment in the section in the comment sections below. Her idea for having a consultation to talk about something she wants to do away with also sounds a bit nuts and pointless to me. It also seems clear to me that these two don't have a clue what to replace a license with when they do want to, or if they do get, a, get a, rid of it. But what do you guys think? Right, I shall leave the video here until the next time. I shall bid you farewell and take care. <laughs>